Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you're watching this episode and also depending on where you're watching from. This is Beholding Christ Show and my name is Ben Fetcher and I am here again so that we can share the gospel, the true word of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that I commend you, brethren, to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. And I'm so excited for this wonderful moment that we are going to hear the word of God. And again, today I'm not alone. I'm joined by my brother, Pastor Kevin. Karibu sana. Asante sana, my brother. Thank, thank you for joining us yet again. Uh, thank you too for having me yes. once more. Wow, wow. Maybe uh, before even we proceed, I would like to pray. Then I'll come to you so that you can uh, tell us more about yourself again. Amen. I know you've introduced yourself in our last episode, but there's someone who is watching us for the first time. They'd like to know you. Amen. Father, we thank you for the hearing of your word brings faith. We thank you that today we'll be taught and we learn your word and our lives will never be the same again. Our hearts are ready to receive. Our minds are yielded to you that we may hear from you so that we may be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that our lives will be settled in the reality of the spirit and not moved by the realities or the facts of the things around us, but will be settled forever in the reality of what the word of God says about us. We thank you for this wonderful show. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Yes, yes. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Pastor Kevin Getau born again. The Lord Jesus is my personal savior. I am a pastor, an associate pastor together with Newman's Ministry. I serve at Newman's Ministry, which is at Gekambura uh, in Kikuyu. And I'm glad to be here today. I'm also a, a married man. I have a wife and two kids. Wow. Amen. That's a blessing. Amen. Yes, yes. And in our last episode, you said you preach Christ. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Christ is the message. Actually, I realized, Kevin, that uh, mm -hmm. the entire Bible mm -hmm. has no other message. Yes. It's Christ. Yes. You know, sometimes I used to think like Christ only comes in uh, from Matthew. No. But after studying, not just reading, yes. after studying the Bible, yes. I realized that, that actually from the beginning to the end, yes. it's about Christ. It is about Christ. And if a man cannot preach Christ, then you have left the scriptures. Yes. You're, uh, you're not a preacher of the gospel. <laughs> you're not a preacher of the gospel. Yes. And you can be, be named among the people that Paul said, even a man or even an angel. Yes. No, that's serious. <laughs> comes. comes and preaches any other gospel uh -huh. apart from Christ's uh -huh. gospel. Then let him be, be a cast. Let him be a cast. Mm -hmm. So it is very good to know that um, our message is one. Christ. Yes. So in our last episode, we were talking about righteousness. Yeah. And I want us to take it up from where we left. We realized that uh, uh, in the beginning, man was created in the image of God, mm -hmm. in the likeness of God, mm -hmm. and he had been given the power and authority and mm -hmm. the dominion to rule the earth. Yes. Then at a point when sin came, man lost all that. Yes. And uh, we saw that uh, man realized that he was naked. Yes. And uh, fear for the first time came to man yes. because he felt the sense of inferiority yes. and guilt. Yes. And uh, you say that this was a result of uh, the, the spiritual uncovering. Yes. So the nakedness here was yes. not about physical nakedness. Yes. It was the spiritual uncovering. 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 And uh, immediately man realized he was naked, as you taught us mm -hmm. uh, in the last episode, mm -hmm. is that he started looking for ways to cover up his nakedness. Yeah. And he went and looked for leaves. Yes. But when God came, I, like, I love how God used to visit them. Yes. The Bible says in the cool of the day. Yes. So when God came and the man was hiding because of the inferiority and the guilt, yes. uh, the sense of guilt, uh -huh. which had come because of the spiritual uncovering. Yes. Uh, when man told that, when God uh, asked man who told you you are naked, then we know what happened. Yes. Then uh, God uh, covered man with a skin. Yes. And you said that that was symbolic of the righteousness that was to come through Christ Jesus. Yes. And you also said, if I remember very well, that before the foundations of the earth, because God is all knowing, yes. he knew what would happen. Yes. So he had provided a solution, which is Christ. Which is Christ. And we say that now Christ, okay, now righteousness 
is that garment yes. that man was covered with yes. and uh, is what now became the solution but all that was a, was a picture was a picture and now when Christ comes he says this those who receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness, righteousness shall reign in life yes. now I want us to take it from there uh-huh. the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness so uh, what is a gift and how is righteousness a gift yes uh, first of all what is a gift? Mm-hmm. Uh, a gift is something that uh, someone gives to you freely. Mm-hmm. It is not something that you can work to earn. Yeah. You don't earn. You cannot earn a gift. Mm-hmm. It is something that maybe, for example, maybe when maybe you did a wedding, there were people that brought gifts to you. Yeah. You didn't buy those gifts. Yeah, it is them that bought those gifts mm-hmm. and they brought them to you. Mm-hmm. Therefore, when they brought them to you, you didn't need you didn't need to buy them mm-hmm. again. Yeah. They give you just receive. Yes, you just receive it. So it is not the receiver who suffers the cost. No, it is not the receiver. It is the giver. It is the giver who <laughs> suffers the cost mm-hmm. of the gift that they are giving to you. Yeah. So your work is just to receive. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, uh, when uh, now God gives to us his own gift, mm-hmm. that is Christ or his righteousness, there are people that are refusing to receive this gift. Mm-hmm. Because righteousness in itself is a gift okay so so righteousness so a gift the only thing you can do to a gift is to receive, is to receive. yes nothing else mm. you don't even need to know how much it costed the the giver you don't need to you do, it's not it's not your problem <laughs> whether they bought it at one million that is not up to you mm-hmm. for them they bought a gift and they brought it to you with love mm. and they give it to you wow you have added another one yes. love yes so uh, a, a gift comes from the place of love. I don't think a person can give you a gift if they don't love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is because they love you. It is yeah. because they care about you. That is why they are giving to you mm. the gift that they are giving to you. Yeah. Therefore, it is the same with God. Mm-hmm. Because it is because he loves us. That is why he releases to us his own son. And through his son, now we are able to receive the righteousness that is of God. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, in the Bible, there are two kinds of righteousness. Mm-hmm. There is the righteousness that comes from the law, mm-hmm. and there is the righteousness that, that comes f- of God mm-hmm. or from God. Mm-hmm. You so, see? so you have said the righteousness that comes from the law yes. and the righteousness that comes from God. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, elaborate. Now, let us read from the book of uh, Philippians chapter 3 yes. and verse 9. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 9. Okay. Uh, I think with, with scriptures, we are always tempted to read the other verses. <laughs> yeah, us, I know. Uh, I've been there. <laughs> let us not be tempted. <laughs> let us read just uh, that one verse. I don't know. I'm using the Amplified. It's okay. The Amplified. Uh, Paul is saying, mm-hmm. And that I may actually be found and known as in him, mm-hmm. not having any self-achieved righteousness Mm -hmm. that can be called my own yes based on my obedience Mm -hmm. to the law's demands ritualistic uprightness and supposed right standing with god thus acquired Mm -hmm. but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in christ the anointed one Mm -hmm. the truly right standing with god which comes from god by saving Faith. faith yeah by saving faith. Mm. So you see, Paul in that, uh, in that uh, verse is speaking about two righteousness. One that is found by obeying the law mm-hmm. and another one that comes through faith. By, by you receive it by faith yeah. from, from Christ. Mm-hmm. You see, the one that comes from, uh, from the law, you have to work to earn it. Mm. And it is something that is not even easy mm-hmm. in itself. Because with the law, the law demands that you do everything that it calls you to do. Yeah. You have to do everything, mm-hmm. 100%, mm-hmm. for you to be righteous, for you to be justified before God. So it's, it's the demand of the law is not 90%, it's 100%. The demand of the law, according to the book of James, <coughs> it is if you miss one, you miss all. So if you if you keep at ninety nine point nine 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 nine, you have broken the entire you're law. Bre- you have broken the law, the entire law. If, for example, the law we have ten the ten commandments and the other laws. If you you go against one, you go against all. Mm-hmm. If maybe you you go and commit adultery, you've murdered, you've 
you know, you've done all these others. Mm. With the law, you have to do everything. And that is why it, it was really impossible for men in the past to be justified through the law. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Paul, in the book of, uh, in the book of Romans chapter 3, yes. Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3. Yes, I think from verse. Ro Romans chapter 3. Paul speaks concerning this, uh, this righteousness that comes from the law. And yeah. he says mm -hmm. that through the law, no one is justified. Mm -hmm. By observing the law, mm -hmm. no man can be justified. Can be justified. Yeah. In verse, I think, uh, verse. From verse 20. From verse 20, yes. Yeah. For no person will be justified, made righteous, mm -hmm. acquitted, and judged acceptable in his sight mm -hmm. by observing the works prescribed by the by, law. By the law, yeah. So you see, even if there is that righteousness that comes through the law, then there is no man that can be justified. The reason why God gave the law was not so that man can be justified. The reason he gave the law is so that man can see himself the way he is mm -hmm. in sin. Mm. And when man now has been able to see himself in sin, is he now comes to a place whereby he realizes that he needs God. Mm -hmm. He comes to the end of himself. So that is the purpose of the law. That was the purpose of the law, to mirror you in sin. Mm. When it's, it's like, a, the law is like a mirror for, you know, you go before the, the law and then you see you, your sins standing before you. Mm -hmm. And then you realize all of a sudden how much you need God. Wow. So the, 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 the purpose of the law or the law was not meant to be kept. It was yes. given to show you yes. how you are not even able to, to reach to the standards of the law. Exactly. Yeah. You, you cannot be able to be justified by, the by observing mm -hmm. the law. Mm -hmm. No man can be made righteous by doing what the law demands of him. Mm -hmm. The only way set for man to be made righteous through the scriptures is by believing that Jesus is Lord. Wow. Because the Bible says that we believe unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. We don't work unto righteousness. unto righteousness. Because as much as, you know, as much as you do all these good things, righteousness in itself is a gift and it is not and it is received mm. freely. So I'm saying two, two righteousnesses here as you've put it. Yes. One is a gift. Yes. The other one is a work. Yes. You have to work. Is, 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 there, is there any possibility to work? And fully attain to this. Well, if you do not want the God's way, <laughs> then you can go that way. Of which, the Bible is very clear. No one, mm -hmm. it says, for no person will be justified. That is a future tense. Will be justified. Mm -hmm. No one. God had already seen that no man can be justified by observing the law. That is why he gave us an easy way. Mm -hmm. That is Christ. It is not easy in itself because God had, himself had, be, uh, he had to become a man. Mm -hmm. Do what man could not do. The Bible says that he condemned sin in the flesh. Yeah. Our sins were condemned in the flesh. Mm -hmm. In that flesh that God put on. He became a man to do what you could not do. Mm -hmm. To fulfill the law. Wow. The purpose why he came was to fulfill the law. So he came to fulfill the law on my behalf. Yes. So what about those people who are working hard to perform and to fulfill the law? But they say that uh, Jesus said in Matthew that do not think that I came to, de to do yes, away, to, 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 to do to away do with the, the law. law. But I came to, some say I came to, uh, to enforce it. Others yes. say I came to fulfill yes, it. Yes, yes. So what do you say about that? Th there is that confusion when people think that uh, Jesus did not come to, uh, w what they say is that he did not come to destroy the law, that he came to enforce, to give it power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is not the truth. If you read your scriptures very well, it says that he came to fulfill. Mm -hmm. It is to fulfill. He came to fulfill the law. The reason why he came to fulfill the law is because we could not fulfill it. Wow. So he came to do it on our behalf. Wow. And, and he is the only one who could do it. Why? Because in his birth, he was born without sin. Mm -hmm. This is the only man that was born without sin, mm -hmm. Jesus. The rest of us... <laughs> We were born in sin. Mm -hmm. We were born as sinners. Yes. We were born having or carrying with us the seed of Adam. Yeah, the sinful the, the nature, sinful nature yeah. was, was in us. But Jesus, when he was born, he was born having the seed of God in him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have the seed of Adam. Mm -hmm. that, is what, that is why he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And he is the only man who could fulfill the law. So in him was no sin. Yes. He was not a sinner. Yes. 
That is why he is the only one who could fulfill the law. Therefore, if there is another man that can fulfill the law, then you have to be without sin. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this yes. is serious. Yes. And now that, that shows us the love of God. Because if he came on earth as Jesus Christ yes. to fulfill what we could not have fulfilled, so that by the virtue of us being in him, yes. we are counted as if we have fulfilled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now when now you are you come to him, now I think there is a there is somewhere the Bible says that now we have fulfilled the law. Because now we are in him. Mm -hmm. We have come to go through him. Yeah. And now we are justified. Just as if we have never sinned mm -hmm. before God. Now we can stand before God without any sense of guilt. So now what, uh, what, uh, what made Adam and Eve to hide to God, to hide from God because they had a sense of guilt yes. and fear. Yes. Now we can stand before God without that sense of guilt yes. and fear. It is now removed. Mm -hmm. That is why in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, Paul says that there is therefore mm -hmm. now no condemnation, condemnation for them who are in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Because now that uh, sense of guilt now has been removed. And it's not by works. You don't work towards it. It don't work for you not to be justified. You receive this free gift of righteousness, and through this gift of righteousness, now you're able to bring forth the fruit of God mm -hmm. by when you have received it freely. Wow. Yeah. I can see there is someone watching us, and uh, he's wondering, when you talk about works, yes. what works are you talking about? Yeah, 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 it's true. When we're talking about works, we're talking about good works mm -hmm. that uh, men do, thinking that, it is by them that they can be justified by God. Mm -hmm. For example, like prayers, or like fasting, like helping the needy. Those are good works mm -hmm. in themselves. And uh, I think, uh, let us read uh, a verse from the same, same chapter in uh, Romans chapter 3. Yeah. Uh, verse, verse, verse 24. Uh, let us start from verse 24. And we are still reading using the Amplified. Yeah, we version. are still using the Amplified. Okay. No, let us start from verse 22. Okay. It says, namely, the righteousness of God, which comes by believing, believing with personal trust and confident reliance on Jesus Christ. And it is meant for all who be who live. Believe. This righteousness is meant for all who believe, mm -hmm. not all who work. Okay. To all who believe. It is all who believe. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 23 says, since all have sinned and are falling short of the honor and glory which bestows and receives. Mm -hmm. So all men, according to the law, are sinners. Mm -hmm. All men, we are all, ju we are, we are all judged the same. Yeah. We have all fallen short of the glory of God yeah. because of what Adam did on the, uh, on, on, on the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, and all are justified and made upright in right standing with God, freely and graciously by His grace. Yes. So all these people that have fallen short, they are all justified freely by his grace. Mm -hmm. Because you see, with grace, what grace does is that grace gives, mm. but faith receives. Yeah. Grace gives what, you know, what Jesus did on the cross. Grace is that giver. It's a supplier. Yeah, it's a supplier. But now you have to receive. You receive by faith. But the Lord demands. Mm -hmm. Faith receives. Yes, the Lord grace, demands. Yeah, grace exactly. supplies. Uh -huh. So if the, if the work of faith, which is our part, uh -huh. is to receive... And the law has nothing to offer. It's only demanding. It demands of us, and mm -hmm. it demands of uh, of uh, of sinful people, mm. bankrupt, bankrupt people, yeah. people that cannot give anything. It's like you go to a poor person and you st you start demanding for them to help you, mm. or for for them to give some things to uh, to you. And that is unfortunately that is what is going on even in the churches. Mm. We are demanding so much from sinners. We are demanding so much from, from people that cannot give anything. Bankrupt men. Bankrupt men. Mm. You see, so that is the work of grace. Grace gives, then faith receives. 25, yes. it says, mm -hmm. whom God put forward, this is Christ, whom God put forward, forward before the eyes of all as mercy seat and propitiation by his blood, the cleansing and life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation to be received, received through faith. faith. This is what we said. Yeah. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over and ignored former sins without punishment. Mm -hmm. 26, it was to demonstrate and prove at the present time in the now season, mm -hmm. the now season, yeah. that he himself is righteous and that he justifies and accepts as righteous him who has true faith in, in Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. That is the 
That is the only way God. That is the basis. That is the basis. There is nothing else we are supposed to do. Yes. So f- the part of us, or our part is to, to, to believe. Yes. The moment we believe, yes. we, we are justified. We are justified. Mm-hmm. We are justified and God sees us as though we've never sinned. Verse 27 says, Then what becomes of our pride and our boasting? Mm-hmm. It is excluded. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. It is wow. excluded. Why? Because we have no part to play. Mm-hmm. Our only part is to receive. I, I see it. Because I, I, I believe if it was by the law yes. or by the good works we do, yes. that some of us would boast. Yes, say, you know, boast. I, I give. And I see that in the, in, yes. in the story of the tax collector uh-huh. and the, the Pharisee who had yeah. gone to pray. Sure. This guy comes and tells God, you know what, God? I give my tithe, yes. I fast, yes. and uh, I do this and this. So he had a room to boast. Yes, he had but now when it boast. comes to righteousness... Yes. Uh, God doesn't give us that privilege yes. to boast before him mm-hmm. and to say, now Mimi, I'm a good tither. Mm-hmm. I'm a good tither in our church. Mm-hmm. I tithe a lot that, more than all of you. It's not about that. It's now. not about that. God doesn't bless us, even in blessing. <laughs> he doesn't bless us based on that. Wow. And I think uh, if it was if what I was that direction, uh, yes, some of us wouldn't be speaking when other people are speaking. <laughs> because they have good uh, works. They help the poor. They yes, do all these things. Yes. But we are not saying that these things are bad. They are but not. they are not the means yes. of justification. They are not the means so of justification. So there is no room at all for boasting. Yes, mm-hmm. it is excluded. Interesting. <laughs> Banished, ruled out entirely. Oh, on wow. what principle? Mm-hmm. On the principle of doing good deeds? No. But on the principle of faith awesome. that is that is where i was coming to mm-hmm. so there are there are two principles there yes. is the principle of works mm-hmm. you had asked a question yeah. what are these works that we are talking about mm-hmm. there is the principle of works mm. or the law of works and there is the law of faith yeah. that is what paul is speaking about mm-hmm. because you know it is you know for the jews were they were given the law mm. for the gentiles we were lawless but still for the for these lawless people they can still boast by doing good things. Mm. So there's that principle that they can bring forth and tell God, me, I'm a very good uh, person. I help the needy. I don't know if you can remember the story in the book of Acts of mm. a guy that uh, was, uh, Peter was sent to because he was a good guy. He would, he would help the sick. Yes, he yes, would, uh, yes. You that was the uh, Cornelius. Cornelius. Yeah. The, yeah. Cornelius is the guy. Mm. But you see, when God sends Peter to Cornelius, uh, Peter to Cornelius, he says to him, uh, he says to Cornelius, there is a guy that will come and mm-hmm. he will tell you what you must do. Mm-hmm. He had done so many things, but there is one thing that he had not done. Yeah. What he must do. Mm-hmm. And that is to believe. To believe. Mm-hmm. Because wow. all these things, still they could not um, make him stand justified before God. Mm. They were good things, but they could not make him justified before God. Wow. That is the principle of works. This was a gentile. Mm. And he still knew this principle, how, how it works. Mm. The principle of, of works. works. Yeah. And there is the principle of faith. And that is what God demands of us. That we believe. Wow. It's all about believing. Yes. And, uh, uh, hey. well, that is, that is interesting. I also see verse 28 say, For we hold that a man is justified and made upright by faith, independent yes. Of and distinctly apart from the good deeds, works of the law. Uh-huh. The observance of the law has nothing to do with justification. Uh-huh. So you, you have brought two kinds of people there. You yes. have mentioned the Jew yes. who is given the, the law yes. and uh, the, gentile the Gentile who is lawless. lawless. But uh, I've seen Paul doing justice. Yes. He labors yes. in doing justice to both yes. because the Jew could have boasted that I have a law, yes. so I have a, a relationship with God uh-huh. by the law. Mm-hmm. Then the the gentile could have boasted about his his, his works, yes. and though he is his lawless, performance. his performance, yes. even outside the law. Yes. But Paul comes and says, no, not one. Yes. And I think from Romans chapter 1, verse 2, uh-huh. up to chapter 3, yes. that is what he's establishing. That is what he's establishing. That, that there is, is no room for boasting. There now. is no room for boasting. Mm. And so therefore, he's, he's, he's doing away with the Law of performance, that is the law of uh, the principle of works. Mm. He's doing away with it so that he may establish the law of faith. Okay. Yes. So now, Nano is righteous. It's yes. all about 
believing. Yes, so because in verse 29 he says, mm. or, is he, or is God merely the God of Jews? Mm -hmm. Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yes. Yeah, of Gentiles yes. also. So he's talking about two people, mm -hmm. the Gentiles and the Jews. Mm. When he's, uh, that is why he's establishing the law of faith. Oh, wow. So this law of faith, it, it, works, it works for all, whether you are a Jew or you are a Gentile. Oh, wow. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Yes. So it's all by faith, by grace through faith, because grace is now God supplying this righteousness, yeah. and faith is now how we receive this righteousness. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to work for it. It's not in our giving. It's not in our fasting. It's not in anything we do. It's all in everything that Christ did, for, Christ us. did for us. Well, I see your time is so much spent, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like you to say the last words before we, we, we call it a day. Uh, thank you so much, my brother, for inviting me to this show. Uh, I, think, I believe this is a good show whereby we can, uh, we can actually teach Christ. Mm. And because this is what the church needs at the moment, this is, this is the demand that is in, 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 in the ground, that people need to be taught Christ. Because it is by teaching people Christ that uh, people are set free. Mm. It is by teaching them who Christ is really is and what he really did for us on the cross of, of Calvary mm. through the, the finished work of Christ men now can come to God because on that cross something significant happened the temple of the temple was torn into two mm. and which signifies that now man can find access to yes. God wow. any man mm. you don't have to go through your pastor you don't have to go through your bishop you just have to go and receive salvation wow yeah thank you so much pastor kevin amen that was awesome i think we should i should call you again amen. to push this uh, uh, again and again and again so thank you my viewers for being with us and uh, you've heard this is not about some special people it is not about some bishops and some uh, reverends or some special people in any way it's about everyone who believes because it is by faith it is by grace through faith that we are justified mm -hmm. so if you are there and uh, you've never heard this, then you should believe that when you believe in Christ, you have been made the righteousness of God. You've been working to become righteous. Settle down. The gift has been given. You don't have to work for it. You just need to rest because Christ has done all the work. And now righteousness is yours for the taking. And you take it by faith and walk in it. So thank you very much for being with us. This has been Beholding Christ Show, and my name is Ben Fetcher, and you are blessed and remain blessed. And uh, all this is because of Christ and what he has done for you. You are blessed and remain blessed and continue prospering in the Lord because God wants you well. In Jesus' name, thank you. Bye-bye.